Helmets are extremely important. They can save your life when used properly. In 2005, 784 bicycle riders died on U.S. roads. It is estimated that 75% of these deaths could have been prevented if the rider was wearing a helmet. Here's shocking news. More than 40% of all bicycle-related accidents are within our age group, ages 14 and under. But bicycle riding is not the only time for wearing a helmet. Skateboarders, roller skaters, skiers, motorcyclists, ATV riders, and even horseback riders should wear helmets. Helmets soften the impact when the foam inside crushes or slowly deforms. The helmet must stay on your head and it must be fastened. We have a lot of head traumas due to people not wearing helmets on motorcycles, kids not wearing bicycle helmets. You get some, some traumas from kids not on skateboards that fall off skateboards. I choose to wear a helmet because I don't want to die. Um, if I fall off without and hit my head without a helmet, it could be uh, pretty bad for me. So I'd be, rather be safe than sorry. You should replace your helmet if it no longer fits correctly, if the outside is foam and not plastic, or if you crash it. There are many different helmets for different sports, so be sure to buy the right one. Florida law states that motorcycle riders under 21 years of age must wear a helmet. Most skate parks also have rules for wearing protective gear. Well, the most significant thing that we always talk about is the deaths associated with not wearing helmets. But the other thing is that there are people who do survive um, who have significant head injuries um, from not wearing a helmet. And with that, you can actually have significant long-term disabilities associated with that. No, I do not wear helmets because it's too hot. I don't wear a helmet because it messes my ears and I'm skating. I'll try to skate and then I feel like there's a bee on my ear because of the chin strap and that's why I don't wear a helmet. I don't wear a helmet because it aggravates my head. Don't take the risk of suffering a life-changing or fatal head injury because you think wearing a helmet makes you look stupid or messes up your hair. Make the right choice. Wear a helmet. Cortland Doherty, TSC News. Imagine living without electricity, running water, and many of the other things we take for granted for a whole week. The Florida Frontiersmen is a nonprofit organization hoping to preserve the skills of the first settlers. It goes back to a simpler day when you can pull off the road and you can actually go back to the pre-1840s and you just leave your worries at the gate. We do archery, hawk and knife throwing, and we do a lot of uh, seminars about we're learning about the way things were done back in the old days. It's a really good time. I've been doing it since I was real young, and um, I, I just can't not come. Everyone loves me here, and, every, and I love everybody here. It's, it's, it's a real good time. It's all about camaraderie. I camp in a one-pole tent pre, pre-1840, cook on an open fire, and um, sell cast ironware. We kind of cook the same kind of things that you would cook at home, but we just do everything a little bit differently. For example, if you want to cook you know, a piece of meat, you'll put it on a spit, roast it over the fire all day. If you want to make cornbread, you put it in what's called a Dutch oven, which is a cast iron pan, and you put the, the batter inside of it, and then um, with, on the lid, you put all kinds of hot coals and just let it sit there and bake. I like how authentic everything is and the reality of everyone that works here. I come here because I like the kettle corn and the food and the jewelry and stuff. Seventh grader Maria Tello is attending her third year at the Alify River Rendezvous. What I do at the Alify River is shoot bow and arrows, throw tomahawks, and shoot black powder guns. For an early American lifestyle experience, Alify River Rendezvous is a great place to visit. You will learn life skills of the first settlers and much more. Cortland Doherty, TSC News. It's that time of year again, time to lace up your skates and enjoy a sport that seems almost foreign to some Floridians. Young and old visit the Lakeland Civic Center to try their hand at ice skating. We like um, skating and playing with our friends. We like it because it's fun. I like it because we get to be with our family and be with our friends. I like the music and having a great time just skating on ice. I can't hear escape because it's fun. My favorite part is when you meet new people here. I think my favorite part is watching the kids learn how to skate. My favorite part is ice skating because I always like it. 
While patrons are getting lots of practice, the Lakeland Civic Center Ice Patrol members are keeping watch while helping and entertaining the skaters. I skated uh, since 1950 with different shows and I ended up with Disney, with, I was with Disney for six years. I did many comedy skating, silly skating, you know, and, and of course you, you got to be a good skater in order to do comedy, you know, so. And I enjoyed doing comedy and make the kids laugh and so on, you know. My favorite part is having the opportunity to come out here, skate, help kids learn how to skate. And if you've never skated before, I recommend coming out here. Public ice skating costs $6 for adults, $5 for children, 12 and under, and 4 if you bring your own ice skates. Spectators get in free. Visit the LakelandCenter.com for December skate dates and times, or call them at 834-8100. Sarah Duncan, TSC News. Forget the sunscreen and flip-flops. Florida's coolest attraction is not the beach, it's ice at Gaylord Palms. This amazing attraction covers more than 18,000 square feet of space. Nearly 2 million pounds of ice has been sculpted to create a life-size horse-drawn carriage, Santa's workshop, and a breathtaking church. My favorite part was the slides. They were really neat. My ice experience was fun. It was cold, and um, the slide was awesome. And my favorite sculpture was probably the gator. Going down the slide. And I love it. I go down the slide fast. The amazing ice sculptures include a surfing Santa, a life-size train, a nativity scene, and an ongoing sculpting piece. If you're coming to ice, dress warmly because this Florida fridge is kept at 9 degrees. Being a Floridian, uh, it was really cold for me. I like the hot weather. <laughs> I was freezing. <laughs> it was all right. I definitely wore a lot of clothes. I've got lots of layers on, and um, my nose was freezing. But other than that, it was, it was fine. Ice will be open through January 2nd from 10 o'clock a.m. to 8.30 p.m. For the best deals, order tickets online or call 407-586-4-ICE. Kelsey Friend, Jordan Lester, TSC News. Everyone has an idea of what they want to be when they grow up. Firefighters, police officers, you've heard them all. But what if someone came to you with a job idea that you would have never thought of doing beforehand? That was the case for a lot of students here at LGMS yesterday when our school held the Great American Teach-In. I think it was important because the kids can get to know what I do and if any of them are interested in what I do, it'll maybe inspire them and make, me, make them want to do it. I think that the kids need to know about the coral reef and how we need to take care of it and things that we need to do to make the oceans better and a healthier place. I really believe that children are the future. I, it might sound like a cliche and it might sound hokey, but unless you really show them what the world is out there, I don't think they're going to want to come as willingly. I think it's very important for students to know that there are different um, employment opportunities out there for them after they graduate from high school. I think the students need to learn about how you can learn to play games with their dog and bond with them, but you can still train them without getting really um, mad at them and you don't have to hurt them or anything trying to train them. You can just bond together. I think it was important because uh, with the music that's mainly force fed out there today on BET, MTV, uh, with this being MTV, what they call MTV generation, that there's other there's options that they can take and they don't have to eat the music that they're being force fed. You know, and there's, there's good music out with a good message. It's kind of like coming home. <laughs> Having worked here for 17 years as a teacher, it was uh, interesting to come back and uh, get a chance to interact with the students and uh, share with them a passion of mine. Lake Gibson students appreciated being told about jobs available in the outside world. Ashley Kochenberger, TSC News. Backpacks. They're quite handy, aren't they? Carrying your textbooks, folders, papers, schoolwork, the whole nine yards. But the more heavier they get, the more pain in the neck they become. You see, there's no real proof as to if it really causes back damage. But scientists are doing their best. Four to six school children come home from school every day complaining that their back aches. The only explanation is that their backpack's overweighted. Your backpack should average the weight of your body weight divided by seven and rounded. And today, we're gonna average the backpack weight right now. But first, let's see the student opinions. They can hurt your back so much that it'll bend your spine and maybe even break it. They can mess up your posture and become like hunchback. It can affect your back all the way up to your neck and it could cause diseases. After weighing six different student backpacks, the average weight was 12 and a half, the lightest weight was six pounds, and the heaviest weight was 18 pounds. 
Today we're going to talk to Dr. Mike, who specializes in chiropractic work. It's, I mean, pure and simple. By picking up the backpack correctly, bending over, making sure it's not too heavy. Most backpacks should definitely be anywhere between 15 to 20 percent of your own body weight. And that's usually not easy to do with as many books as you guys have to carry around today. So by using both straps, making sure that the most of the weight is in the strongest part of your back, that's usually like the middle of your back, not hang, let them hang down like your kneecaps, not hanging them on one shoulder. And uh, even though I know it looks you know a lot cooler that way, I would definitely go with the two straps because it disperses or diverses the weight better across your back. So sharks, you've heard it from the professional. Don't let your backpack weigh you down. Allison Leslie, TSC News. As many of you don't know, the Lakeland Public Library just remodeled their youth section. The mission of the Lakeland Public Library is to make high quality services available. I think that's great. The lounge is a lot of fun. It's just like a good environment to come and study for work at school and then you don't have to stress about it. The teens really love the new computers that we have set up for them. This way they can get on the internet and do what they like to. They can play games, check MySpace. As you can see, my favorite thing to do at the library is MySpace. The library is good and for children it has more books and come to computers too. Make sure to visit the Lakeland Public Library and discover all the fun activities. Rebecca Lomberg, TSC News. Teachers and students have been getting their hands dirty in and outside the classrooms. Ms. Cooper's critical thinking class has been planting beautiful flowers to add color and life to our school. Our favorite part of planting was that we were able to go outside and do a fun activity. It makes this building over here look better than what it was because it was just a big dirt pile. It makes the school look better and not trashy. Contributes to school because we get to do community service for the school and, a te and school is all about teaching us um, what to do and how to success in life. Students are more likely to remember these lessons because they were involved in fun, hands-on learning activities. Now let's go back to Kat and Ashley who are at the Rendezvous. Kelsey Friend, TSC News. We walk the halls and we study in the classrooms, but do we even take the time to think about all the work the staff has done in order to make like Gibson such a great school? Here at LG, our own principal, Mr. Barber, was recognized by the Florida State Board of Education. He's one of the 29 principals who brought their school's letter grade up by two or more letters. Mr. Barber is the only middle school principal in Polk County this year to receive the honor. Plus, Lake Gibson has been named a five-star school for the past eight years in a row. It feels great. I mean, we, we were hoping that we would improve our grades, but uh, to go from a C to an A was, you know, a surprise, a pleasant surprise for all of us. What were some of the things that you put into place last year that helped our school's letter grade go from a C to an A? Well, I think one of the uh, big things is that we were all focused on the same goal. I mean, we wanted to, to do an improvement, and we did. We had some programs like Adopt a Student, uh, some things that all the teachers were doing, different teachers were doing in the classroom, uh, focus on the reading and so forth. All of those things were important, but I think, you know, the biggest um, the biggest uh, congratulations, I think, goes out to all the teachers and the students who worked so hard to make it happen. Congratulations to Mr. Barber and the staff for making LG such a great school. Megan Mahan, TSC News. Some of you may not know, but we have an FFA Future Farmers of America team. Their advisor is Ms. Marshburn. Maggie Roberts has more on FFA Week in today's top story. February 17th through the 24th is National FFA Celebration Week. With over 500,000 members through all 50 states, Puerto Rico, and the Virgin Islands, FFA celebrates the leadership, services, businesses, and technology of agriculture. FFA has and continues to set gold standards for agricultural education. As Vice President of the FFA, I help the President maintain order during all of our meetings. And during FFA week, I plan to help the community in any way possible. I, Secretary of the FFA, keep an accurate record of all the meetings. And for FFA week, I plan to get more people to join. This week's purpose is to celebrate the membership and loyalty to FFA. To look at really what's going on. To focus on community service and plan events that will teach students more about agriculture. 
As chaplain in the FFA, I say prayers for every meeting, and for FFA week, I want to help all the FFA members to do better in their competitions. For more information, you can visit www.ffa.org, or you can speak to Ms. Marshman in the ad department. Blue Jackets, Gold Standards, Maggie Roberts, TSC News.